What was the last dream you had? I dreamt about performing, I think. The fan base is expected not to cause any kind of inconvenience, so a pool became a theatre. That's a Paris Hilton type expense. Literally getting cast like into the fire there with some of the rules. It's, it seems to be a, very strange. A beatdown. Oh. Podcast kittens, welcome to another podcast of Cat Cat. You forgot to say I'm Kathy Cat and I'm Lady. I was going to go for that one now. I am Kathy Cat and he is. Why are we doing this? It's because we're going to talk about performance in Japan that you guys might not know about, but in Japan, it is one of the most famous female performancing types ever mm-hmm, i think mm-hmm. the biggest the most famous one and the most crazy rudimentary hierarchical and um, fan supported cultures in japan yeah. ever prepare yourself for this one my friends because we're gonna cover some bananas <sighs> ground today Beautiful. we are talking about the all female cast theater troupe named Takarazuka. This thing, my friends. So this is one of the most popular and most famous forms of entertainment in Japan. And wow, it's bonkers. Wow, it's bonkers. So it's a theater troupe. It's all female theater troupe. And females play both females and males on the stage. And the... The, the the fan base around this is first things first you can never get a ticket it's like the most popular thing ever <laughs> yes they play the biggest theaters in the country and, and you it's still just, can't i still can't get a ticket i'm so it's salty always i sold really want to watch they, it one day do they perform like six times a week or something How uh, you... i don't know how often they perform but whenever i have been looking for to get a show or see a show it's been really hard to yeah, get tickets you so can't get tickets i would love to share some private uh stories about how i went there and how it was a great time but i can't because you can't get tickets can't get a ticket. so so and we're gonna go into what it is why you can't get tickets <laughs> and, <laughs> and maybe and some hints at the end how you might get tickets through the grape wine through in the graveyard through the grape wine grape wine the grape wine grapevine the grapevine for the grapevine like you know the grape sh- vibe? Sh- oh, the maybe grape that, vine. that's yeah oh. i thought you were saying the gray wine are you like the gray wine are you dissing <laughs> my german accent right no, now that's the gray wine oh. it sounds like a lo- hashtag sounds like a, a lo- lady bear. sounds like a location of lord of the rings <laughs> we need to head to gray wine to get our tickets to taco rasa gusaka saka 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 maybe that's what you have to do to get the tickets so i'm glad we energyed up a bit that was a bit of a low energy intro yeah i, would, I, mean, I wasn't quite sure whether i could harmonize so. got the cat lady bear is kept with beer we're talking about taco rasa exactly <laughs> all right so it is actually a really interesting one because up until the ni- 1913, mm. all kind of performance was male only. Mm-hmm. Even at, if you think Kabuki, all the female actors are still acted by men. Mm-hmm. Uh, still to this day. Because mm-hmm. the idea of like, ooh, women on stage mm-hmm. is kind of lewd. It's kind of like, oof, mm-hmm. no, that is, that's, you know, a bit too mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. But then 1913, there came Ichizo Kobayashi. Mm-hmm. And you made Ichizo. Yeah, he started doing actually a lot of things over there in Hyogo Prefecture, and he kind of wanted to attract visitors, so he first started with like hot springs and similar things like that, and I think, if I got this right, there was a pool, and then they had to close the pool, and in the end, they're like, let's turn this into a theater venue to get people to come, with an all-female cast, even playing the male roles, and boom! A new form of entertainment was born. So let's just explain that a bit further, because we had it explained to us, but I got a feeling the audience might need a bit more context. This man was from Hyogo Prefecture. He was a business fellow, had a big hand in a lot of huge business conglomerates, and he had this uh, tourist thingamajig, spa, hot spa, hotel thingamajig. There was a pool in it, and um, turned out the pool got shut down, because you can't have men and women swimming in the same pool. So the pool got shut down, and he's like, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it into an all-woman theater. So a pool became a theater. How about that? Yeah, in the old days, it was a pool. Obviously, nowadays, it's not a pool anymore. But apparently, those are where some of the origins come from. And at the start, now go back to the notion of, ooh, seeing women on stage, that's kind of oof, a bit too much. It's kind of lewd. So at Apparently, at the start, also the majority of the viewers or all the viewers were female. So it was then kind of okay. That, that was like not women in performing in front of men. It was like, okay, that's women in performing in front of women, which to this day, um, the majority of fans seem to be still female. Yeah, it's all... 
Yeah, no, interesting. All female cast, and the entire fan base is also female. Mm. I was going to say, if you you're going to have think a- it other way around with idol culture. No, well, that's exactly right. It's gonna, yeah. I was going to say, if you've got a pool and you need to get people in there, I would say instead of making the pool into a theater, just, you know, put in the seats so people just watch the chicks in the pool. The idea was probably not to make it lewd and not to make <laughs> it kind of appealing to, to a male audience and ah, probably keep it enough safe. It also, the point is family friendly. There is no kissing on stage and stuff like that. So they try to keep it kind of on the safe level there. So in 1919, he also opened a Takuraza. Ta- Takarazuka School, Music mm. Revenue School. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a private school. Uh, in 1927, the first review in Japan, like a f- type of French type performance, was held and it was a huge hit. Mm-hmm. And after World War II, they started The Rose of Versailles, which is based on a very famous manga and anime, which you might have seen. They kind of do reruns in Germany and Europe from time to time really? of that one. Old school story. Really? Very old school, yeah. It's, I think they called it Lady Oscar in uh, Germany. So it's like a French Revolution story. Uh... Um, and they play that because Lady Oscar is like... Uh, a, a woman, but she wears like kind of outfits of like guards and such stuff like that. So it, I don't quite <laughs> know the storyline that much, but yeah, became a, at least a huge hit. And that's like one of the things that you sometimes will see as well on posters still to this day. And they perform all year round. They all year round. We don't, do we, Shaz, do you know how many times a week they perform? How many times a week they're on stage? For one title, they will do it every day for about two months. Every day. Yeah, and you can't get to, it's sold out every day for and two months. Usually they do two months in Takarazuka City and two months in Tokyo. Oh, so Takarazuka City is the name of the city in Hyogo Prefecture where the whole yes. thing began. Yes. I see. Okay. All right, there's the whole thing was trying to get visitors in there. Okay, Smokey. So, pretty quick turnaround. Six years of this thing being operational, then he's like, make a school to train the actresses. Mm-hmm. And then after that, and then we've got another eight years before the review happened, the first review. And we went thanks into a Rose of Say so what? Yeah, thanks for the bath. Well, I was thinking about it. six years is a pretty quick turnaround, frankly, to start mm-hmm. a theater company, have it be successful enough that you need to start a dedicated school to training the actresses. You know, WWE were in business for like 30 years before they opened their performance center. Oh, so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's a pretty quick turnaround. Quick turnaround, especially for the day and age, if you think about ah. it, like after the war and around the war, stuff ah. like that. So interesting. Yeah. So what's so unique about Takarazuka, apart from the fact that they're all ladies? All chicks on stage. So what is unique about Takarazuka, apart from the fact that they're all ladies? Tell me more, Kathy Cat. What? Are the unique points. Okay, so there's, it actually comes usually in two parts. One part is the play that they okay. put on, and then the second part is like a like a, a different type. So the first one is like story, and then the other one is more like line dance, big feather ornaments, grand staircase parade, like in the old days. So it's like a, almost two different shows you get in one. Hang on, wait, what? Yeah, you kind of get the show is split into two parts. One is the storyline, the musical, or like whatever they're portraying. And at the end of it is like a thing with like line dance and different costumes and a sparkly staircase and big feather ornaments. So there's like the big finale is almost like a different show. Hang on. So it's like an opera in two parts. The first part being relatively low key, and then the second part being a spectacular. The second part is not necessarily connected to a storyline. So the first oh. part, for example, will be the Count of Monte Cristo, or Wuthering Heights, The Great Gatsby, Pride and Prejudice, a picture of Dorian Gray, like actually mainly Western plays, which I really? find interesting. Really, Western plays, really? Yeah, okay. Western plays a lot. Yeah, West Side Story, Faust, even Sound of Music. Really, and then. The second part of it, or like the, the later half of it, or later, later part of it, not doesn't have to be half of it, will then be just show, like old school showtime, oh, like so it's glamorous just old school showtime. Oh, yes. really? So you have a piece of theater, you go out for intermission, you come back in, and then it's just, woo! It's just spectacle. I'm not sure. I don't think they're separated with an intermission, but I wouldn't know because I can't get tickets. Can't get tickets. Too hard to get. <laughs> but yeah, so apparently, what I heard from someone who managed to get a ticket, it's like the part, the play was great. They enjoyed the play. But then that show at the end blew their mind. Really? They were like, wow. So many people, so many costumes, just really grand and sparkly, really? gorgeous and glamorific. So really? apparently, so yeah. So each performance is a large scale production involving over 400, 400 costumes and 80 actresses. Wow. Oh, 80 actresses. You've got 80 people on stage. But 
400 costumes. Just do the math for that. Yeah, 3.2 costumes per person. Well, that's quite a lot. That's well, that's quite a lot of costume changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're not, certain characters might not get that many costume changes either. So. Yeah. Well, I reckon I did my maths wrong. Hang on a second. I can't math, so I, I just said yes. 400 divided by 80. That'd be, yeah, so 3.5? 5? 5? Five? What happened, Charles? Five costumes per person? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. You can't <laughs> not either. I am <laughs> so glad none <laughs> of the people on this podcast <laughs> can do math. Oh, he's putting up his why, why wear entertainers <laughs> as opposed to physicists. Yeah, uh, that's why we uh, that's why we do what we're doing here right now. We're not uh, <laughs> developing a new math formula that's in the future. That's why I work at Google. <laughs> <laughs> and I that's don't. why we both dress up in pigtails exactly and flashy right. outfits. <laughs> oh boy! <clears throat> Speaking of flashy outfits, back to the show. Yes, costumes is the next one. Costumes. Costumes. You just heard that we have uh, about four hundred. Five each. We've established five each. Awesome. So the costumes are generally very extravagant, very gorgeous. Hat, shoes, feathers, and each staff like each staff member has different costumes as well that they mm-hmm. change into. Mm-hmm. So apparently, also the staff that makes these costumes, so they don't just order them; you have to make them, mm-hmm. is divided into costumes for men characters. For male characters, I guess, for female characters, and just for hats. Just for hats. There's a, there's stuff just for hats. All right, fair enough. Well, listen. And they select fabrics, buttons, materials, all of that sewing process, color adjustment. Each costume can cost from several million yen to sometimes ten million yen. So ten million yen, that'd be what a hundred grand, yeah. Ten, 10 million grand. yen. Ten that's grand. T- that's more than that. Hundred grand, right? Hundred grand. Yes. Hundred grand. Hey, what ten is million that? is what? Yakumangen. <laughs> Welcome to the episode well, of Cat Beard. Where we can't do much. 10,000 US dollars is about 1. 1. 1.5 right. Oh, so, so we're like talking 10 100, million yen, but we're talking 100 grand. You're talking, 100, talking 100 grand for a costume. 100 grand for a costume, bros. Boy, that's some. Um, that's a Paris Hilton goes to a party type expense budget, isn't it? That's probably like, you know, the princess dress and Rose of Vizay. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. like hand, golden glitter sparkle things, I guess. If you had 100 grand for a dress, what would you make? Oh, I wouldn't make a dress. I would buy myself a house. <laughs> I would buy myself a house. <laughs> so, so that and, dress, does that dress like could keep a roof over me, keep uh, me warm, well, shelter maybe me from you the could, storm? Maybe you could make that a feature of the dress. Maybe it's a dress <laughs> with a roof. <laughs> a dress with a roof. Um, or just as, a house that's shaped like a dress. So. As you might infer from the budget, these costumes are spectacular. Mm-hmm. So they are absolutely master, visual masterpieces of costuming. And so. if the costume wasn't visually exciting enough yet, there is more to come. You're going to m- 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 make it up. You're going to make it up. Put your makeup on. Exactly. The makeup probably stands out the most whenever you see a poster with someone where you're like, you dipped into the makeup basket a bit too deep. That's Takarazuka. I always, purpose. when I see the posters, I always feel it's women who've made their faces look like that of Elvis Presley. They all look like Elvis Presley to me. <laughs> they really do. I can't. Yes, this poster we got right here are the five of them. Where did it go? This one back here. See, they all look like Elvis. Look at those faces. Every one of them. Elvis, 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 Elvis. Uh, I don't see that, but I guess you see that. I mean, it's very heavy makeup. I but see there's dead a people. Reason. That is the reason why it's very heavy makeup. Um, because it's actually to construct a fantasy or fictional mm. world. You're not supposed to be a real character. You're supposed to be a dreamy character in a dreamlike story of glittering costumes. It's kind of the uh, escape of reality, I guess, in a way. But isn't this interesting? When you go to the school, we haven't spoken about the school yet. We'll get there. When you go to the school, you learn all the skills you need. So you learn your singing, Rose. you learn your dancing, you learn your acting. It's very regimented. We'll talk about it in a second. But it seems you don't learn makeup. See, this makeup, you just figure it out. That comes later, um, but I think it's... Actually, there is a makeup lesson for new students, but that's on, they only have it once. Only once. So kind of like if you really are serious about Takarazuka, you need to find that out beforehand yourself and teach it to yourself. Think about the Japanese style of where like we don't show you everything. You have to figure some things out for yourself. That is a very Japanese thing. That's yeah. happened with a lot of the stuff I've dealt with here. But I've been, yeah, you know, not been told what's going on. And then afterwards, they're like, I'm like, what do you, you, 
why didn't you tell me that? Well, you're supposed to figure it out by it's, yourself. Yes. I'm like, how about? <laughs> anyway, so that's part of, that's something that happens in Japan. Mm. So I think with the makeup, even though it is like very big and flashy, you have to learn it kind of yourself. You get one class from your senior students later in the school. But up until then, you actually should already figure it out yourself. And sorry, nowadays there's YouTube. I'm pretty sure you can get pretty close with your stage makeup if you just look at a YouTube tutorial. Do you learn like makeup from YouTube sometimes? Yeah. Do? It's easy. Just look, look at it, copy it, try if you have the same stuff and oh, okay. see how it goes. It doesn't always I match, struggle. But... I'm not good at blending. You need a blendy brush. Oh, well, this is the problem is why I'm not good at blending. I yes, see. I don't have, have the appropriate brush. artifact. Mm. All right. Continue, Kathy. I Kat. like the one sentence uh, that we have uh, here is like, by becoming a face that is made up rather than a natural face, the audience can live in the world of dreams. Oh, that's so lovely, it's isn't it? purposely suspension of disbelief, kind of. Yeah. It's like you want to dream that dream with I them. love the world of dreams. Mm. What's the last dream you had? I dreamt about performing a thing that was actually, funnily enough, the th- dream Look I had that. recently. You can fit straight in with the Tucker Rosaka like a people. It's <laughs> perfect. Rizaka. So there's also a very high class system upon depending on how good you are and what you're hierarchy. good in. Yeah, yeah, a hierarchy, as it were. Tell us more about it. So they uh, actually Kat. have different names. So one of them would be the Hanagumi, the flower one, the Tsukigumi, the moon group, the Yukigumi, the snow, the Hoshigumi, the star, the Soragumi, the cosmos. And then there's a one special one that there's a new Senka one, which is specializing. Each one of them specializes in something else. Whether you're good at acting, singing, uh, performing, dancing, it would have maybe some sort of speciality. I'm completely confused. What are these separate groups going on? What do they all represent? So each one of them has like a strength. So for example, uh, one uh, this, might this be is, for this singing. Is, this is for the, the actresses, yeah? Yes, for the actresses. Okay. So the actresses are divided into groups. groups. Yes. Okay. And, and everyone knows that. And okay. each group has around 80 members. Okay. And okay. then in that group... There's generally like a top star. So the top okay. male and the top female are kind of like the like the best kind of like okay. they're the most like around the highest the ranking. Top kinda. of the hierarchy, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then it's a bit right, like I a see. So ranking chart. Okay. So within the context of the whole show, it's broken up into these what six different groups. And then within each one of those groups there's a, a hierarchy. I understand. I would not say like in the whole show. I think just in the whole Takarazuka kind oh, of institution. school institution, not in the show. Hang on, so hang on. So this is not this is the school, or this is actually in the theater group. It's the actual company, yeah. The actual company. It's in the actual company. You are looking at You're me. You're asking a... questions. I cannot give you answers for. No, I try to understand this system. This listen. <laughs> None of us are Takarazuka pros, apart from Shiori. <laughs> She's going to tell us what's up. <laughs> I see. I thought in the whole theater that would make much more sense. Yeah. So the theater itself has five groups, which is like flowers, moon star, and so on. Yes. And each group has high, each high, like a individual hierarchy. So five groups have five top stars. Mm-hmm. Five groups have five top stars. Five top stars. So top star of the flower, top star of the snow, top star oh. of the moon, top star of the star, top star of the cosmos. Oh, right. so like top female, five top females, five top males. Yes. Okay. Okay. In that theater group. So I would not say in the school because they're probably not all haven't graduated yet. But I assume okay. once they graduate and are actually, then they become That's part of the, In the company. As you can see... Group. The whole thing's not easy to understand, as yes, you are now learning. Yeah, there's a lot of hierarchy in there. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of rules and stuff. Yeah, mm. So usually, if you enter the theater, not the, from the school, you graduate from the school and enter the theater, then you will not go straight to the top star. You have to spend like several years as a like a Working cohort, yeah. And then, if you are good enough. Uh, once the current top star retires, they will announce the next top star. Oh, they will announce who's following oh, after really? them. Do they have the choice who is next? Well, probably not. A choice? Do they, they just, choose who's next or does someone, does the school choose who's next? Uh, yeah, so the theater management team will okay. choose who is Figured. going to be the next star. Makes sense. Uh, so apparently the pecking order is based on the student's popularity, ability, okay. and potential. Okay. So that's probably how... People rise to stardom. Okay. All to right. Stardom. Happy days. Happy days. And now we're coming back to the school that we've been the wanting to school. talk about. So all of this, everything that happens in the theater, this is one you once you've graduated from the theater school. 
And this is something else. The school has really high hierarchy. Um, so actually to enter the Takarazuka Music School, you already have to have some serious, serious skills. You already have to be good at ballet. You got to be good at Japanese dance. You're singing, mm -hmm. you're acting. You got to be good at this. So all through high school, you were getting private lessons in all of this. And then you get to audition to enter the theater school mm -hmm. and just sees of people audition, right? It's like one for one person who gets in, there's like 20 people who audition or something, right? So just a massive swather of the population tries to get into the theater school. Honestly, I'm surprised it's only one one to 20. Like yeah. I thought it would be way higher than that. There was, um, there was about, just, my it, drama school was like that. For every kid who got in, it was about 20 who auditioned. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just seeing how like how hard it is. Probably what's harder in there is to stay with the rigid rules. Is two years. You literally get in cast like into the fire there with some of the rules. It's, it seems to be a, very straight. It's a beat down. So when you walk from class to class, you have to march like you're in the military. So you have to walk and turn 90 degrees when you're going down the corridors. You can't just go for a stroll and just get out of the way of people. And there's very strong, like, senpai kohai. We've talked very about this many times on the podcast. Very stuff. strong senpai kohai. Very and staunch. if you've already been cast in the iron and then the new folks turn up, you want them to behave because you had to behave. So these kind of manners and rules get passed on to the next generation. And if you think about it, this is all, these rules are all happening outside class. So then in class, of course, it's going to be a beat down in terms of actual learning the skills. I'm sure your teachers are going to be very strict and whatnot. And if you mess around at all, I'm pretty sure it's and quickly. Everyone is your rival. And I think a lot of people who get into the school do not actually make it all the way to the end because they can't deal with the high level of performance, hierarchy, rules, manner, etiquette. There's a lot. If you manage to go through that, though, then respect. You're probably a pretty good performer. And, you, yeah, you got to be pretty um, strong of character as well. Mm. I mean, it kind of reminds me a lot of the stuff I see the K-pop kids go through with mm. their training when it's super arduous and they deliberately treat the kids badly to see who's has the will to stay in there and who's mm. emotionally strong enough. To It, it kind of seems like a female version of being in a sumo stable. Oh. All these hierarchies, all these rules, mm. you have to do things in a specific way. The bottom, the person at the bottom of the hierarchy is, you know, they're taking care of awful chores for everybody else. Then you raise up the hierarchy and now you can be, when you used to be the victim mm. of all kinds of abuse, now you can victimize others. Oh, let's well, not do that. But yes, uh, it's probably a lot, a lot of hierarchy. You have to control as you raise the hierarchy. There are some anime that are heavily inspired by that kind of Takarazuka system. One of the most recent one is Kageki Shoujo. Mm -hmm. I watched that. They don't specifically say Takarazuka in it. I don't think they do. But it's very much implied that that's what they mean with the school, the rules, the ballet. Kind of everyone is your rival, but you still really want to get in there. So if you want to just like in a lighthearted way, have like a look at how that school could be. In, in a more idealized way than uh, What's the name of this anime? Uh, Kageki Shoujo. Okay. Sweet Exclamation ass. mark, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get to the old theater school. So, Holy moly. We know some rules. There's more on written rules and manners. Oh, bro. So now, Oof. yeah. So, so. Oh, so now. So, Takarazuka has a motto. Modesty, fairness, Grace. Grace. And it has an unwritten code, a uh, system of an unwritten code called the Sumire Code to follow this. <laughs> no, called the Sumire Code. Yes, the Sumire Code. What is it? It's, oi, so the following, you, realistic details of all the actresses cannot be on any point disclosed. I can't speak English anymore. Cannot be disclosed to the audience. So because, the following. Because, why? Because it's, it's, it's a fantasy and we must maintain the fantasy as very very important mm -hmm. by the way i kind of support that it's like kayfabe in pro wrestling i kind of support that 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 idea of maintaining the fantasy but here are the things you're not allowed to no one can know about you your real name no one can know it i mean makes sense a lot of people don't want their real name out there anyways nowadays in the game of social media but mm. you're also not allowed to do social media yeah i can't do that <laughs> your age your, your your weight and your measurements? No, nah, can't put that out there. Mm -mm. How much are you getting paid and no one can know? 
get this, no one can see you eating or drinking. Yeah, no. the, up until then, I kind of understood, like, real name, age, and your three sizes. You don't want that as a woman out there anyway. Okay. So that's like, that's pretty private. Okay. Amount of income, also very private. Mm -hmm, if you sure. don't want to share that, you shouldn't have to. Sure. But then, appearance while drinking or eating, you're not yeah. allowed to drink or eat. Can't be seen drinking or eating. So how about that? Yeah, so I guess you're doing that, that just sparkles. behind closed doors the whole mm. time, I suppose. Um, your clothing, so get this, even when you're off duty, you need to dress in congruence with the character you're playing. So if you're playing a male character, you kind of, even when you're not on stage, have to still use male clothing to not break the image of that character. So if you suddenly turn up at pigtails on a miniskirt, you break that dream and that illusion that you are that princely character. Mm -hmm. Of course, no cigarettes and alcohol, uh, nothing related to bedroom activities, mm -hmm. and no relationships! Sounds like very much idol culture. It sounds like idol culture, except... Minus social media and eating mm, and drinking. Yeah, idol culture, but it feels like... But a very structured version of it. It's kind of mm. like military idols. Rules. Lot, lots of rules. Military idols. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's actually... There's, there's a lot of these rules. Not necessarily the rules, but the structure I can get behind. Because I think, especially for young people, it teaches them discipline, having this level of structure in place. But that's, you know, kind of for the school. Once you're a real human being, the fact that you have these many rules on your life is uh, remarkable. Because it affects your entire life. It's from, you know, when you're sleeping, you got to follow the rules. When you're eating, you got to follow the rules. The well, you thing. can't even be seen eating. So if yeah, you're really, exactly. really hungry and there's a camera on you, you can't eat. Can't it? Yeah. Oh, Deal no, with it. I don't know how they do that. Respect. But mind you, it's it's very similar to kayfabe in wrestling. We're expected to follow similar things. But here's one thing that's very different. Those rules and strict mannerisms do not just stay in the theater or outside of the theater, not just with the actors, but actually also exist for the fan clubs. The freaking fan club. That's the part that makes it very, n very new, very uh different, very h hard to get your head around. Um, yeah, I don't know how to... The fan club, so the fan club has a system of rules all to itself. Uh, the fan club, all right, so now the fan club that is, is going to have pretty a intense. hierarchy within the fans itself. Mm. And the fan club can participate in activities such as doing security for an actress as she walks from the van to the back door of the theater. So the rules, some of the rules I find very strict is like, first of all, you're not allowed to speak with her. So you need to quietly walk next to her to protect her on her way to her changing room. The idea of protection, I was like, I can get behind that. But like none of them is allowed to talk because then I would cause jealousy between the other fans who then like, why are you talking with her? I want to talk with her. And then the highest leaders or the, the ones who've been in the fan club the longest, they're the ones who look allowed to walk at the front closer to her and maybe open the door for her. But if you just enter the fan club, you're just a noob. You can't do that. So that hierarchy is trickling down from the theater to the fans. Um, how do you get into the uh, fan club? in the first place i probably Do you have, have to audition to, to get into the fan i don't think you have to is sign up for it but uh one of the things is you can't and that's what i found also interesting you cannot be in several fan clubs at the same time so there's you, more than one fan club but per person yeah if you're a fan club per of person. actor actress a actress b actress c you can't be in all of the fan clubs at the same time oh, you have to find your one princess or your one prince you uh, use one to support you cannot jump between people none of that uh, being disloyal to your princess or prince there it's very exclusionary isn't it mm, I mean I, have, I can see that these rules were not I don't know where they come from and it's probably hard to trace them down but I can exp I can kind of see how like female fan club jealousy kind of started to create those rules I don't think that Takarazuka imply those rules onto their fans. I think the fans by themselves and all female, mainly all female community started to make these rules. Because again, senpai kohai relationship. I've been longer in the fan club. You cannot walk next to her. Mm -hmm. It seems very much, if you think of anime, where sometimes girls are like, how allowed? You're not allowed to talk with Yukito-kun. You've only just joined your school. That seems to kind of exist in an amplified version, maybe with the fans. I think that's something that happens in a lot of Japanese fandoms. I mean, I think it's like that for the visual key fans as well they have their hierarchy within the fan base mm -hmm. if you're top of the hierarchy you can stand front row center during the show if you're not you have to be at the back it's yeah and then conflict within the fan base and so forth it's really mm. moly so uh yeah the fans are it's not allowed to talk and then now tell us about giving the actress a present you generally can't like give 
big presents, but you can give letters. Mm -hmm. But when you give letters, letters, like ideally, apparently you're supposed to go down on on one knee or on your knees to then give the letter. But again, you're not allowed to speak. She can get the card and say thank you. Mm -hmm. But again, she's not allowed to say different words to different people. She has Mm -hmm. to say the same thing because then if she says thank you very much to you and just says thank you to me, I might get jealous of you going like, oh my God, she spoke more with you than she spoke with me Ah! after all of this. So again... The only way that you get more exposure to your superstar is by being longer in the fan club, very loyal in the fan club, work your way up, like you work, like the girls work their way up in the theater, and uh, then you get more time with her or like closer, be closer to her. But I'm not sure if we ever can talk. What I wonder is at what point do you get to have some fun? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? At what point do people go, yay, what an enjoyable experience? I guess the shows are probably what makes people want to like love the show so much that they become such big fans that they're willing to do that. And I wish I could tell you how it is because I'm. it makes me even more curious. It makes me really want to see because I'm like, if fans get so excited and so passionate about it that they're willing to do this, the show must be amazing. I want to see it. I don't. I'm so <laughs> terrified. The whole thing makes me say, you know what? I'll just, I'll stay away. I don't, I don't want to cause any conflict. I don't want to throw a spanner into the spokes of this base. Exactly. I just want to see it. What I know if, if, if I'm there in any form, no matter what I'm doing, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I had actually the show to see one Takadazuka actress oh. because she was acting ex Tuxedo Mask for the Sailor Moon musical. Oh, right. And that became like a whole new thing. So now you have the Sailor Moon fans, but then you also had the Takadazuka fans who would come to see just her wow. on stage as Tuxedo Mask. Wow. So I actually saw one of these things IRL mm. because when she was leaving, she had a different, like, first of all, she had like a different, like, extra uh, up loss at the end but also obviously then I was goods from her but then also when she was leaving there was just a big crowd at the exit gate just waiting to see her and she was also not part of the usually in Sailor Moon musical when you leave sometimes they make like a little path and all the actors would be like wave yeah, and say thank you but she was not part of that because obviously she's a different type of star with different rules so she left and then there was a big crowd there saying goodbye to her leaving um did she do a good job of tuxedo manning it? I think so. And I think that's probably the magic of Takarazuka that I'm trying to understand. Sometimes you know that the perfect woman is usually fabricated by male. So think of like female characters that are really like VTubers that are actually made by males. Or think about... Um, you know, the, the perfect construction of an ideal female. Men are really good at that. And then I think this is the other way around. This is just a theory. Uh, it's the perfect construction of the perfect uh, prince. I see. He can't be real because then there's all the other things that are connected to it. Betrayal and maybe feelings that the fans might feel. Mm. But because it is not even a man, but just the image of the perfect man that is there on stage, the perfect prince of your dreams, the suspension of disbelief is probably what makes this so exciting. Um, that perfect man in any way you slice it with this whole company is very very skinny he's a man who's not lifting weights ladies and gentlemen he's <laughs> a man where we go. a I stiff see. breeze will bowl him over <laughs> that's how where you go with that how is this the perfect man <laughs> he got yo if you're stuck underneath a boulder he ain't help you out from underneath there oh dear i hope the fans are not going to come after you now but Will you got to understand lady beard has been working very hard to maintain these muscles muscles and i can understand why well, you would be a little bit upset I've that been, a I've scrawny told, scrawny I've, lady is, is seen as the perfect man i, I see I've, where you're coming yeah, from that. i'm offended damn it what's, what's this perfect man no one can be as perfect Stick as thin, you bless you thank you sweetheart perfect man right but, over here lady beard to clarify as well what's interesting about this uh cult like fan base is it's part of the reason there are so many rules is also as well the fan base is expected not to cause any kind of inconvenience or nuisance Mm -hmm. to society as a whole Mm -hmm. so now interestingly there was a problem recently with i'm not going to say who because they might come after me a famous a, a particular um korean artists fan group 
I will not specify a fight. Specify? I want to specify. Don't specify today. Names. No, no specifying. But, but the fan base got in trouble in Japan because uh, they were outside the venue for the concert and they were causing a nuisance to everyone around them. They mm-hmm. were littering. They were noisy. They waited there like past midnight and whatnot and kept interfering with society and so forth. And so this gave the fan base a bad reputation of course this reflects badly on the artist so, exactly so part of the reason for all these fan base rules is is don't look bad to the public uh don't uh, what is it put put mud all over the image well, of your favorite characters tell Be you well what, behaved t- th- this is one of the kind of the beautiful things about japan is that a concept like that can be first of all brought up and secondly, taken seriously by everyone involved. Mm. In Australia, there'd be no way if you pre- like if you even presented such a concept, we'd be like, "Shut up! I'll do whatever I want." You know, <laughs> yes. straight up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's very Japan specific, and I think also Takadazuka specific in yeah. a certain way as well. It's it's like I say, man. I'm going to stay away from the whole thing. Just I don't. No matter what happens, I'll be incorrect on one level or another. So I nice. really hope that I get my hands on the ticket. I heard for the grape wine, grape wine, the grape wine. The great wine! I heard a gray wine. wine, Frodo! The ring! Yeah, what did you hear at gray wine? <laughs> I heard from the from the tales of gray wine that sometimes you might be luckier yeah, if you go through the English page. Oh, okay. Maybe you'll oh, be able to get page. a ticket. There is an English page I'm now. They're to trying that. to at least get more people to come and actually enjoy their shows. But the, since they have a very, very large fan base, it is still quite hard. But I think they're trying to give chances now for other people to also join the performances because if you keep just with one fan base and you don't let new uh, grass grow, then it's a bit hard to to keep the whole show running. So I think they're trying to make it a little bit more exclusive. So maybe, or inclusive, I mean, so maybe sooner or later you'll be able to actually get a ticket. And I'll let you know once I do. Yeah, so when we'll see you show. finally do get to see Takarazuka, I expect the Kathy Cat Cat with Beard Takarazuka review from Kathy Cat. I'll do that. That sounds like a plan. All it'll right. Be, it'll be a review of this review. The review of the Takarazuka review. Badunch. Well, is that all we have to say? That is all we have to say for now until we get any more details. If you have any more details about Takarazuka or if you got something completely wrong, please. Put that in the comments down on YouTube so we can see it. And tell you what, if you at any point you spot either of us walking and turning at a corner not 90 degrees, put that in the comments as well. <gasps> yes. Set a whole lot of abuse our way. Oh no, I'd <laughs> rather breaking our military school rules. No, thank you. I'm going to keep walking normally. I have shoes that are too tall for these kind of shenanigans. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you guys soon on another episode of Cat, Cat Will Cry. Cry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>